This is John. John is a rice farmer, just like you. John will show you the recommended practices and inputs in growing rice in your area. These practices relate to proper timing, good water management, and fertilizer use. It is important that you plan well ahead. Start by preparing the rice field, even before sowing. Note that smaller fields are easier to manage. Prepare buns in the rice field. Buns should be about 20 inches or 50 centimeters high and 20 inches or 50 centimeters wide. Then plow the field. This is easier when the ground is moist after plowing. Then submerge the field. At this time, start the nursery, sowing 15 kilograms of clean seeds per acre. After sowing, get back to the rice field and start paddling and leveling the submerged field. Fourteen days after sowing, reduce water to at most one inch and make sure all weeds are gone. Apply NPK or DAP at a rate of 25 kilograms per acre while transplanting. Do not apply fertilizer to the entire field first and then transplant, but rather apply fertilizer in the vicinity of where you transplant. Transplant two seedlings per hill, 1.5 inches deep and 8 inches between each hill, preferably in rows. Keep the fields moist. Add water up to 2 inches and remove weeds. Apply urea at a rate of 25 kilograms per acre. It is important you keep the water that is now mixed with the fertilizer in the field. If this water runs off, your fertilizer will also get wasted. If water levels drop due to evaporation or soil infiltration, add water to keep it at 2 inches. Five weeks after the first urea application, after weeding, apply urea for the second time, again at a rate of 25 kilograms per acre. Again, keep water in the field to avoid wasting your fertilizer. Keep water at two to three inches. One week before harvest, gradually reduce the water to zero inches by harvesting day. Let's repeat. Prepare your field and sow rice in a nursery. 14 days after sowing, apply NPK and transplant, keeping water at one inch. 14 days after transplanting, apply urea and keep water at two inches. Five weeks or 35 days after this, apply urea again and keep water at two to three inches. One week before harvest, gradually reduce water. This is John and Richard. They are both rice farmers, just like you. However, John follows recommended practices and inputs and produces much more than Richard, who does not. In addition, John sees rice growing as a business and invests now to increase yields and profits in the future. Unlike Richard, John does not live from day to day but plans way into the future to make sure he can enjoy his old age. Let's take a closer look at each of these. John follows recommended practices and inputs and produces much more than Richard, who does not. For instance, John transplanted his seedlings on time while Richard was late. When time came for harvest, see how John got a better yield? John has harvested 3.5 bags more than Richard. Throughout the rice growing season, Proper planning and time management will significantly increase your rice yield. John has kept a close eye on water levels, but Richard has not paid much attention. As a result, John harvested three more bags per acre than Richard. Throughout the rice growing season, good water management will also significantly increase your rice yield. John has used fertilizer for his rice, but Richard did not. As a result, John has harvested 3.5 bags more than Richard. 
fertilizer use will significantly increase your rice yields. John sees rice growing as a business and invests time and money now to increase yields and profits in the future. For example, John spends 40,000 shillings on fertilizer while Richard uses this money to buy airtime, make lavish contributions to a wedding and buy his booze for his friends. However, as a result of using fertilizer, John harvests one bag of rice more than Richard, which he sells for 180,000 shillings. Now, John can also pay a drink for his friends while still having money left to pay for school fees. The same goes for time. Realizing the importance of timing, John works extra hours during planting season while Richard spends time with his friends. Because John managed time well, he harvests 3.5 bags more from one acre and he does not have to worry about money after the harvest. He can now enjoy his time, while Richard needs to look for casual labor to supplement his income from rice. John also plans well into the future and realizes some investments have lasting effects. For instance, John realizes that spending more time on field preparation or spending money on fertilizer not only increases yields this season, but benefits soil quality in the long run by preventing soil erosion and exhaustion. John also realizes profits from fertilizer can be reinvested and generate progressively bigger streams of income. As such, he started very small, applying 2,000 shillings worth of fertilizer to only a small corner of his field. But the 2,000 resulted in an extra 5 kilograms of rice harvested, which he sold for 10,000 shillings. Next planting season, John uses this 10,000 to buy fertilizer and now gets an additional 20 kilograms of rice, which he sells for about 40,000 Uganda shillings. Soon, John is able to use fertilizer on his entire field. John is able to substantially increase profit, increase well-being of his entire family. He did this by, one, realizing the benefits of proper timing, water management, and fertilizer use. Two, investing time and money now to increase yields and profits in the future. And three, by taking a long run view instead of living from day to day. This is John. John is a rice farmer, just like you. John will show you the recommended practices related to post-harvest handling of rice and the expected returns of these practices. Paddy must be put on tarpaulin. Doing this correctly has the potential to increase the price you get for a bag of your rice from 170,000 to 180,000. Paddy should be spread out at a thickness of about two inches or five centimeters and should be shuffled every 30 minutes to allow equal exposure to sun. Doing this has the potential to increase the price you get for a bag of your rice from 170,000 to 190,000. Drying paddy should not be left in direct sunlight for more than three hours. Dry like this for three to four days. Dry slowly to avoid broken rice. Doing this correctly has the potential to increase the price you get for a bag of your rice from 170,000 to 180,000. Don't sell rice immediately after a harvest, as at this point in time, everybody wants to sell their rice and the price you get for your rice will be low. Rather, wait three months and sell when few people are selling rice and the prices are higher. This has the potential to increase the price you get for a bag of rice from 170,000 to 180,000. If you are in urgent need of money, sell only part of your rice and make sure you know the going price for rice in the market. To repeat, paddy must be dried on a tarpaulin, spread out at the thickness of about two inches and shuffled regularly. It should dry slowly, so don't put it for more than three hours in direct sunlight. Don't sell rice immediately after harvest. Each of these practices can increase the price you get for your rice from 1,700 per kilogram to 1,800 or 1,900 per kilogram.